career started in 1999. I started from India. Then after I worked in Dubai. When I came to Kenya, it was 2020, January. Okay, so... So when I just landed in January 2020, March COVID hit. And it was a very, very bad phase that time. During that pandemic, it gave us a lot of lessons. Kenya's five-star hotels, if you talk about luxury, yeah. they have that touch. We have specific hotels here which have been ranked. People who have passion to do something in their, in their lives, yeah. something very uniquely, yeah. this industry is for them. It's not an easy industry. Africa is very unique. In fact, I call it my second home. And the people here, the way people are friendly, no other country in this world has people like us. Nairobi has been regarded as a commercial hub, but guess what? Nairobi has also been rated among the best cities in Africa. And because of that, today we thought we could bring you just a little bit of Nairobi's life. Hello and welcome to Globe Traction. My name is Pasil Telewa. And to the lovers of outdoor and travel, today we bring you just what you love. And I hope you like it because I sit down with Mr. Bupendra Kumar, the general manager of Argyle Grand Hotel, with over 23 years of experience in the hospitality industry after working in France, Dubai and Africa. Kumar brings so much more insight and even how they've been able to navigate the COVID-19 pandemic besides the tricks that he uses to ensure that his employees stick around. I'm sure you're going to learn something and I hope you enjoy Mr. Kumar's story. Nice to meet you finally. Nice to meet you, madam. Yeah. Kumar is my name. Pasil is my name. Pasil. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank and you. thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Yeah. How is work? Work is okay. We have been busy. Mm -hmm. but busy is a good, a good yeah. thing, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please but have a seat. the rain has been yeah. disturbing. Oh, yes. I hope things will be okay. Has it been so bad for you, yeah, the not, rains? Not really this side. Okay. We, are, we are okay. Mm -hmm. Floods, they, they have not affected us. Nice having you. Thank Finally, you. I know you're so busy, like you said, yeah, but thanks for making the time. Thank you so much and thanks for inviting us and uh, great thanks to you for giving us a chance to be on KTM. Oh, come on, yes. so please. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So tell me, you've been in Kenya for five years yes. now. Yes. But I understand you've been in Tanzania, in, you've been in Uganda. You can do, yes. Yeah. So fast forward to where did your career start, Mr. Kumar? My career started in 1999. I started from India. Then briefly one year and one and a half year I worked in India. Then after I worked in Dubai. I was in Dubai, Abu Dhabi. I worked there for two years, three years. Then after I came to Uganda in 2004. So since 2004 I'm in Africa now, in East Africa. You've also been in France at Louvre Hotel, yes, is that I, correct? Yes, before, yeah. uh, before joining Agail Grand Hotel, I was working with Louvre Hotels Group. It's a French brand. Mm -hmm. So we were there for special uh, meetings and trainings, GM's conference. So we, we used to go there and it was like company's uh, profile and their standards and their style of training their GM's and all those things. Yeah. How, how do you think about a career in hospitality industry? Hospitality industry, I would like to say it's not easy. Yeah. The career in hospitality industry is very unique. People who have passion to do something in their in their lives, yeah. something very uniquely. Yeah. This industry is for them. It's not an easy industry. It has a lot of challenges. You will be away from your family. You will have no time. Mostly when people are enjoying during public holidays, You're during working. Christmas season, we have to work. Yes. So you have to sacrifice your family life mostly. But end of the day, it's a very interesting and very passionate industry. And uh, it's a very unique career, in fact. And I'm very happy to be a hospitality personnel. It's <laughs> great. Let's, let, let's talk about your being in Africa. Mm -hmm. Because, I, like I mentioned, you've been in Tanzania, Uganda, and yes. now Kenya. Correct. Yeah. What has it taught you different from France, different from Dubai, and even your home country? In yes, yes. Yeah. Africa is very unique. In fact, I call it my second home. And the people here, the way people are friendly, no other country in this world has people like us. Number two, the way we, we respect people, the way we welcome them, this welcoming, this you can say 
that gratitude of you can say a warm welcome yes. no but you cannot find it anywhere no matter how much better technology you have but that is that personal touch is still there and being Africa, I would like to say it's very unique because it has everything which is natural. If you go to Dubai, European countries, everything, most of the things are artificial. They are depending on technology, but we are still having this nature. We are yes, still yeah. on the lap of nature, so which is a very crucial thing and which is giving us a better life and better always, you can say, atmosphere and the scenario. Managing Grand, I mean, managing Argyle Grand Hotel. It's a five-star hotel in yes. Nairobi, Kenya, and it hasn't been long on the market. You're the first general manager. Good. What lessons would you say, you know, throughout your career, you'll be bringing on board, you know, in terms of managing this hotel? Okay. So I would like to say, being in Africa, yeah. uh, Agile Grand Hotel, it comes from Australia. It's an Australian brand. Yes. And Agile name came from uh, their diamond mines. They have diamond mines in Australia. Yeah. Their names are Agile Diamond Mines. So this yes. name came from there. Yeah. So Agile Grand, they deal always with five-star hotels. They have more than 200 hotels all over the world. Their, their presence is in Australia, China, Philippines, Indonesia, Singapore, Sri Lanka, Nepal. Now first time they are coming <coughs> in Africa and it is the first hotel. Specifically, they chose Kenya strategically. So what I bring to well, Agile... Why is that so? Why did they choose Kenya? Because, as I said, Kenya is the hub of everything. It's like a gateway to Africa. They could have chosen even South Africa, maybe other countries, but the way the tourism sector, which Kenya has, yeah. you know, other countries also they have, but here the, se the sector is, is in a di on a different level. They have everything. You go to wildlife, you go to nature, you go to safaris, everything is available here. So related to hospitality, people are having, business people are there. Even you have laser people, and since we are close to the airport, we have all these transit people, airport people who are just transiting and all those things. So it's it's like combination of everything. That was that's why the company decided to come into Kenya. And and you understand what uh, the the secretary, cabinet secretary said about you know the tourism industry, that yes we have five star hotels in Kenya. But they are not acting five stylish, you know. Yeah. So there is something that you know he wants to bring on board. Good. How do you receive that sort of news? So, and if, what do you have to say about Kenya's five star, you know, experience? You know, Kenya's five star hotels. If you talk about luxury, yeah, they have that touch. We have specific hotels here which have been ranked. Regarding the CS said about the hospitality industry, and he said about the hotels. You know, our Kenya Tourism Board, Ministry of Tourism, they have guidelines. Yes for different categories of the hotels. Yes. So if you follow all those guidelines, yeah. you are going to fulfill all the requirements. You are complying every requirement which is given by the government. Once you comply with everything, you are. And not only in this today's world, those guidelines are very important. But apart from that, what exactly we are doing towards our society right now, the way global warming is coming on. Exactly. So how we are doing our hotels yeah. like eco-friendly, how we are doing our waste management, all those things. So what we need to do as a part of CSR, the way we say corporate social responsibilities, so we need to add on now all these factors, all these aspects of eco-friendly hotels, CSR facilities also, and recycling our waste and all those kind of things. We need to add on all these new elements according to today's world, then only we will become a real five-star hotel. Yeah, don't you think our, our <laughs> you know, our details are quite shallow when it comes to, oh, a five-star needs to have this number of rooms and this number of rooms. Do you need, do you think, you know, from your diverse experience that we need to, you know, uh, broaden it a little bit further, mm -hmm. you know, according to international standards? Because you've been in Dubai, you've been in France, yes. I'm sure you've been in Paris, you Correct. know, being in France. So you've interacted, you know, with your colleagues and people managing similar hotels. And yes. the fact that you are managing Louvre, yes. which is very big, big and, diverse, and diverse, it's yeah. a five star. Yes. Yeah. So, so tell me a little bit more deeper, you know, from your perspective, honestly. So in that, in that regard, I would like to say yeah. we need to little bit extend and we need to expand our, you can say, the experiences or maybe the guidelines yes. in terms of international level. Uh, the, the way I said as a CSR part, as I said, even the eco-friendly hotel. Yes. And apart from that, what we are doing, how we are supporting our local communities also. 
in this one. Suppose we open a hotel, are we supporting our local communities or we are looking only for international people? Yeah. That is also an aspect for me. And number two, in that one, we need to add some more skills also in the diversified models. Like if we are going for a real five-star hotel, we need to have very skilled people. We need to train and training modules are very important for everybody. You can see even you go to a five-star hotel, but you can see the service has been slow. Yes. You will not get the service as expected. Yeah. So these are all government has set their guidelines. But apart from that, apart from those guidelines, we need to even have those training setups, those SOPs, which we talk about, those policies. So if we fulfill everything, then it makes all this combination makes a real five-star. When you enter in a hotel, you should have that feeling that you are entering in a five-star hotel. Great. When you're entering a hotel, you need to have that feeling that you're entering a five-star hotel. Correct. I'm interested to know Mr. Kumar's personal life. You don't look pretty old. How old are you? <laughs> I am old, madam. I have yeah. experience of almost 23 years. Yeah, in yes. professionally, yes. Correct. I'm I 45 agree. years old. Yeah, you're still very young, yes. Mr. Kumar. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. So tell me a little bit about family, because I understand the nature of your work mm -hmm. is quite consuming. Yes. Yeah. So my family has been now, they are used to, because they have been seeing me for the last 20 years. Like, I'm always dedicated and committed to my work. Yes. But I have my family always staying with me. So have I they have moved a wife. With you to Kenya? Yes, yes, Great. they have moved. Yes, and uh, the family is happy. The, my wife also; she knows the work, the type, and the nature of my work. So they have not. But still, I get some time to spend time with family. Yes. I even look into that thing. Mm -hmm. I check my kids' educations, their their activities, their day-to-day -day school activities, and all. So I keep I balance both. How, how many children do you have? I have three kids. Three kids. Yes, I have two and daughters and yes. one son. Oh, congratulations. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, are they done with schooling? Not yet. Yes. My first daughter is 16 years. Yes. She's studying. She's my a second. teenager. Yes. Mm -hmm. Second daughter is 14 years. Mm -hmm. My son is nine years. Great. Yes. You're a great father then. <laughs> yeah, because it's not easy. I was about to ask you, how do you balance family mm -hmm. and work? Because this is not mean for Yeah, that is also part of our management because, you know, you cannot always work. You, we are workaholic, but still we need to balance the family life yeah. and all. Otherwise, you will be putting aside because end of the day, for future, your family is everything. Exactly. So we have to balance everything. Yeah. So we get time. We have schedules. We have particular times when we are off on Sundays. At least we spend time that time. We just see how we can do best. And we try our level best. And they have been growing, you know. <laughs> and is your family also, I mean, your wife also interested in, you know, your industry? Yes, actually she is a... She is very interested. She is a teacher by profession. Yeah. Yes. She yeah. used to do fashion designing. She used to oh. teach when she was in Tanzania. Yes. So she is a teacher by profession, but she manages right now. So she is a home minister, I would like to say. So she manages household things when I'm not there. So he is balancing our family life and I'm working always. The COVID-19 pandemic brought a lot of disruption to the industry. Correct. And your industry majorly was yes. affected. How did you handle that turbulent moment and what lessons did you bring on board for yourself going okay. forward? So <clears throat> I would like to say when I came to Kenya, it was 2020, January. Okay. So, so when I just landed in January 2020, March COVID hit and it was a very, very bad phase that time. During that pandemic, it gave us a lot of lessons. But before I used to work for Louvre, but we never closed our hotel. So for me, I always even it was a time to look for new norms, be ready for an emergency situation like that because nobody yeah. expected, even hospitality industry was, it was the more, like the most affected industry that time. Yes. It was, we were very, most of the hotels were closed down, but we never closed down the hotel. So for me, it was like looking for opportunities in crisis. How do you look for opportunities during crisis? Yeah. So what we did, we switched the whole uh, hospitality sector that time because we stood with the government, government also supported, we had connections with Ministry of Health and all those things. So government during that time, people who were all stranded, like uh, <clears throat> the, the flights which were coming, people who are stranded, these uh, quarantine people. So all these people, we took all those kind of businesses that time. So we, we still ran and we worked with the skeleton team yeah. and we made sure that people who were there in the skeleton team, they were paid yeah. and people whom we sent home, they were at home. We even paid them minimum $100, almost like 11,000 shillings that time we were paying at least so that they can run, they can keep they can going, buy, yeah, keep, yeah. keep going yeah. like that. Yeah, great. 
and now we are talking about flooding. Got it. Yeah, I don't know where you live, but being a citizen, you know, of any other country, Got it. you may have watched telly on, you know, flooding happening in Dubai, yes. you know, in lots of countries in the world, including Kenya, Got it. you know, and neighboring Tanzania. Yes. Yeah. And so we are talking about, you know, global warming and climate change to be specific, you know. What is it that, you know, Argyle coming on board, you know, brings, you know, a ready disaster, you know, response and emergency when it comes to climate change? Yes. So what we have done in this one, Argyle has its so own set of standards. Yeah. And since after COVID, the way we discussed just now, yes. COVID has given people a lot of lessons. So we have all the policies and set standards for every situation. If there is a situation for flood, how Agile is going to operate during that time. Not only operating a hotel, looking for business that time, how we are going to come and being as a citizen and being part of the society in hospitality, how we are going to support our people. Even last time when, the, when there was a very huge, I think uh, around this Kabanas area, when there was a very big flood there, yeah. a huge flood during that yeah, time. Yeah. Even we told people who were stuck here, somebody's car was, somebody car, somebody's car was like out of fuel, people were stuck. So we tried even just to, if, and it was raining a lot. So we even told some people they can come in. We, had, we gave them some small shelter kind of thing here. They can just take a break. We told them just to relax and then some tea coffee we could have provided. So it's like a small initiative, whatever we can do, always towards our citizens and our people. So uh, everything we are following according to the standards. Yes. And we have, every, like it's called be ready situation. In those policies, we have all set policies for floods, climate change, global warming, all those kind of things. So we follow those policies and SOPs. Everybody's also talking about eco-friendliness. Eco-friendliness, yes. yes. That's Speak very important. to me. Speak, give me more details, <laughs> Mr. Kumar. So in eco-friendly, I would <laughs> yeah. like to say that what we are doing right now, yeah. like the way we have all our used oil. Normally in other hotels, they have a special tank for it or they have to do a special <clears throat> arrangement. But what we are doing now, there is a company called Zazani. Zani. Yes. It's it's coming from the, it's a local company, and what they are doing, they are taking few, uh, used oil from us and they are exporting it to Germany. Used and cooking oil. Cooking oil. Yes. And this used cooking oil has been exported to Germany to make biofuel. So that's how they are using it. Even all our, uh, you can say our waste management, everything is recycled. Yes. We give all our waste uh, of vegetables and all those leftovers. We give it to local farmers. They use them as a feed for those. Uh, Pigs and all those, pigs, uh, yeah, those yeah, farming. Yeah. So we are trying to be more eco-friendly in this one, oh, whatever good. best we can do. Great. I, I know you have extensive, you know, um, experience also because you worked with, you worked as a food and beverage manager. Yes. Yeah. What is it that you'd say, you know, Agile brings on board in terms of that particular sector that is different from the rest of the hotels, yes. you know, within the country? So in food and beverage sector, I would like to say that we have done a specific, our, most of the food is organic and it's fresh. So what we try to do, yeah. I will tell you our local vegetable suppliers, they are all our local people from Sukumao, Kitengela, yes. Machakos areas, yes, yes. because we are supporting them as a part of CSR also, because we can buy even our vegetables from big suppliers, yes. but those vegetables are not fresh. So what we are doing, we are supporting local farming and same time we are getting organic food, which is very fresh and even their prices are very reasonable. So always we do that thing. Even our meat, which is coming, it is coming from a special butchers with a special process and we have almost seven steps before it is served to our client. So we check the quality, then the storage, then the yeah. preparation and all yeah. those things. There are seven steps. So we have our set standards for the, all, all those things. So I would like to say in terms of food, our food is most of it is organic and which is fresh. And we, we don't even keep like, we don't even store food more than a day. We don't keep here food for like seven days or maybe one week in fridges, no. Yeah. We try to serve always organic and best fresh food to our clients. So it will give them better health and it is always according to their choice. While Agal, somebody would ask, why should I go to Agal Hotel? Definitely. There are plenty of hotels around the airport anyway. <laughs> this is a very good question. Yeah. So why will you pick Agal? Because Agal has its own uniqueness. It's a very unique hotel with unique facilities and uh, with its own, you can say, a unique setup. I would like to start from our landscaping. We are spread it on five acres of land and the greenery, the gardens, we have done the landscaping is so unique, which is very different. 
and when you come to Agail, you feel like you are in a different world. It's fresh atmosphere and very relaxing. You can unwind, you can relax, you can have peace of mind. Number two, the hotel is very smart. As I said, the screens which we are having now in our conference halls, we have five conference halls. So the biggest can take up to 700 to 800 people wow. if it is in a theatre style. Yeah. Yes, and the, the decoration, the lighting, the interiors, everything is done in a very different way. And uh, the screen which we have in our conference hall, that's a fully like digital and 4K LED screen, which is 11 meters by 4 meters. Not inches. Not either. inches, yes. Come on, Lua <laughs> and Indian combined. <laughs> combined. So yeah. it's like very huge screen. So when you watch it from far, you feel like you are in a movie theater. Mm -hmm. It's a very huge screen and it's full, fully LED and those are panels. They are not boxes. Apart from that, if you see our guest toilets and our toilets in our suite rooms, they all are smart. They are, the seats are heated. It has automatic flushing button. Everything is automatic. And it is like, since you said about eco-friendly, so it takes very less water and they are paperless. So everything is automatic. It has a massage button also. Your role as the general manager, what do you consider as the most rewarding aspect of your job? The most? Rewarding ah. aspect of your job. The most rewarding aspect of my job, which I feel, is the satisfaction of my team. My team, even if you are on a HOD level, even if you are on a junior level, if my team is satisfied, if they are happy, they are giving the 100%. I, am, I feel like that is my biggest reward. So tell me, what is the future plans of Argyle Hotel? So, since it is a first hotel in Kenya, yeah. we are building, we are extending our hotel. Just right there, you can see a new construction coming up. So we are building another, another 150 apartments. So right now we have 230 serviced apartments, serviced apartments yeah. which will be for renting for long term, short term, daily basis like that. So we are building another 150. So in next five years, we are trying to open another two more Agail in maybe in Kenya or maybe other country. So tell me about the challenges you faced throughout your career, Kumar. Now this is a, there are a lot of challenges which yeah. you face yeah. on day, day to day. Yeah, yes. Because you know, young people watching or other people watching may think, oh, it's just, you know, a walk in the park. They look at where you are and they look at what you're managing, you know, because you've managed Best Western, you've yes. managed the Louvre, you've managed Speak, so many, you know, excellent, you yes. know, hotels. So there may be, there must be challenges you've faced yes. throughout your career. And I'd like that, you know, you mention them to our viewers. So I would like to say in terms of challenges, the first thing, because I am, I am a very committed person. I love my job and I love what I do. Yeah. So I, the way I focus and the way I am so committed towards my goals, I want my team, my people, whosoever is working with me, should be also having the same focus and the same line of our, you can say, journey. So that is very important. The focus from people is very important, which I sometimes I feel people come, when they come, when they are new, they will give you a lot of commitments, they will give you a lot of things, but later on you find them, they are having that small bit of, they lack challenges, but they lack that focus because of their personal issues or maybe yes, some other things. they want some monetary Correct. benefits. Yes. Yeah. And during my career, sometimes I feel people need like more professionalism. People come from low level, they grow. Yes. So when, wherever you are, whichever level you are, you must give you 100%. So sometimes I feel like lack of skills, which I don't want to take as an excuse, but I always try to train people. My policy is, if you don't know work, but if your attitude is correct, I will train you. We will train you, we will give you our best. Even if you fail one time, two times, three times, we will train you over and over. But the focus, commitment, which I say, which I don't want to see in our team, that people are lacking their, their challenges. If somebody is, falling behind or like they are remaining behind we always give a, they are, give a, extend our good hands and we train yeah. them and we always take them towards the I, Aren't you scared because I've had this kind of conversation with you know many leaders and there are leaders who are scared of training you know their staff because mm -hmm. they are worried once they get they get the skills they're gonna go and look for better or greener pastures mm -hmm. what do you have to say about that? Me I always lead with examples I you can check with my team also. I'm such kind of leader who always lead by example. I always train people because for me, me also I want to grow. 
So if I grow, who is going to be at my place? I want to always train my people so they can take my place and I can go to a further or maybe ahead. So that's how I do my, so I am not scared of training my skills to anybody and I love to train people and we have very strict training programs which makes us different from others. Thank you so much. I brought you something, Mr. Kumar. Oh. So I would like that you feed this. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank you see. so much, Marcel. Yeah. I'm very really grateful and happy. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me. Oh, there you go, we got it right, we got it right, we got it right, <laughs> it fits. As a traveller, do you ever bother to see the standards and quality of services offered to you by the hotel that you pay your money to? So I hope you're going to put some things much more into consideration after this. Many thanks for watching the show today and make sure you join me again next Saturday at 8.30pm Kenyan time only on KTN News. If you have a story you'd like to share with us, please don't hesitate. Give me a write through Globetraction at standardmedia.co.ke or DM us on our social media platforms at Pasil Selewa or at Globetraction. You can also tap that follow button to me on my social media platforms at Pasil Selewa on Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok and YouTube for more of behind the scenes and many other amazing stories. But until then, I hope to catch up with you again soon, same time, same place. Bye bye for now.